Hi, for this video, what I want to do is show you how to find critical value T when you're dealing with a two sample T test. Uh, when dealing with a two sample T test, you always have to ask yourself the question, should I pool or not pool? You only want to pool if the variances are equal to each other. You don't pool if the variances are not equal. It's always safer not to pool. So if you don't know anything about the variances, then you would not pool. Okay, there are different rules for finding the degrees of freedom in order to find your critical value um, on a table. Or even if you're finding it in a calculator, you do have to know how to find the degrees of freedom. So if you are pooling in order to find the degrees of freedom, you're going to take your sample size of your first one plus the sample size of your second one, and you're going to subtract two. If you aren't pooling, the degrees of freedom is just the smaller of your sample sizes minus one. So whichever sample size is smaller, you would subtract one from it and that would be the degrees of freedom that you are going to use. Okay, so let's look at a couple of examples. I did do both for a one tail test or a two tail test because that's really important. Um, for the first one, we have the claim is that the mean of our first sample is less than the mean of our second sample. And so this is telling us that it's a left tail test and whether it's left tail or right tail, um, it doesn't matter. What does matter is your sign. Okay, so if it's left tail, it's going to be a negative critical value. If it's a right tail, it's going to be a positive critical value. Okay, so that's important. That's the one thing that you do want to look for, um, whether it's positive or negative. We would look for our alpha of 0 0.05. And then our sample sizes are 10 and 16. So if your variances are equal, remember that our degrees of freedom is equal to N1 plus N2 minus 2. So I would take the 10 plus the 16 and I would subtract 2, which would end up giving us a degrees of freedom of 24. Okay. Um, so when we go to our table, we would go to a one tail 0.05. And then we would go down until we found 24. So we can see that it's 1.711. And because of the fact, and it shows you over here that if you have a left tail test that you are going to use the negative critical value, the shaded region would be your rejection region. So anything to the left of negative 1.711, you would reject. Okay, um, so our TC for this one would be negative 1.711. So that would be our starting point for our critical value. If the variances are not equal, remember that our degrees of freedom for this one is the smaller of N1 minus 1 or N2 minus 1. So we would go with the smaller one. So for this one, we can see that our smaller sample size is 10. And so we would do 10 minus 1, which is 9. So 9 would be our smaller one. This one would give us a degree of freedom of 15. So we would go with the 9. So again, because of the fact that it's left tail, we are going to report the negative value. We would still be working in the same thing, the one tail 0 0.05, but this time we would just go down to the 9, which is 1.833. And so we would say that it's negative 1.833. And that's it. It's that simple. All right, so let's look at a second one for this one. Our claim this time is that they are not equal, which this tells us that it's a two tail test. So we do have to report both the positive and the negative T scores. For this one, we are going to be looking for alpha of 0 0.01, and we're going to look at both situations. So for the degrees of freedom, for if the variances are equal, we would take N1 plus N2 minus 2. So it would be the 15 plus 12 minus 2, which does give us 25. So that's our degrees of freedom for this one. And our degrees of freedom for the second one would be the smaller of the two. So since 12 is smaller, we would do the 12 minus 1, which is going to give us 11. Okay. Um, so then we would just go to our table. Remember this time we are looking for a two tail test 0 0.01. So we're looking at the very last row. Um, for the variances being equal to each other, we'd go to the 25, which is the 2.787. So our T for this one 
would be negative 2.787 and positive 2.787. So if you look at the table, notice that with a two-tail test, you have to report both the negative and the positive, and you would end up with, if it ends up being in either of the shaded areas, then you would reject. Okay, and then our last one is for 11. So we would go back to the same place. We would go to the final column because our two tail 0 0.01 and we would go to 11 and we can see that it's 3.106. So we would say that it's negative 3.106 or positive 3.106. For a right tail, it would be the same as this one. The only difference is you would report the positive T-score rather than the negative. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you would like me to cover, please let me know that as well.